is most of the 25 offices. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. We are at VMworld 2013. Joining me on the whiteboard is Rory Bolt, CEO of Proximal Data. Rory, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. So this is a return visit uh, for you to the whiteboard, uh, but before we jump into the new stuff, why don't we give folks a quick refresher on what you guys are doing at Proximal Data. Okay, at Proximal Data, uh, we've integrated flash-based caching within the hypervisor itself, and so we can take advantage of flash resources to accelerate all the I.O. flowing through the hypervisor, and we can do this transparent to operations, and we believe that that operational efficiency and transparency is key to our value proposition. So you're a software layer that installs at the hypervisor, right? Correct. We and then you don't care whose flash they use? We can leverage any flash technology. It can be either SSD technology, PCIe uh, technology, or even uh, NVMe uh, technologies for the flash. There are flash vendors that uh, perform better than other flash vendors, so we do maintain a hardware compatibility okay. uh, list for our software, but that's mainly to ensure uh, the quality of, of service that the customers can achieve. And I remember last time we talked, you know, one of your key focuses is delivering a software package that allows people to increase uh, virtual machine density. Correct. Is that, so it's been, you know, it's been about a year since we talked. Are you seeing that happen in the, in the field? Yes, in fact, we, we have a number of customers that are running us in production. Uh, they typically can gain between two to three times the number of virtual uh, machines running on the same hardware infrastructure. Wow. So that's a, a very substantial uh, benefit to them. We have found that there's a whole second class of customers that are using us just for absolute performance increase. So they're not actually trying to drive higher machine densities, uh, but they have mission critical applications uh, that can be accelerated significantly by the use of, of flash storage. And so typically these tend to be uh, database customers that run large reports uh, over large data sets that make multiple passes. And by caching the hot data in the flash, uh, they're seeing actually six to ten times uh, performance improvements. Okay, great. Well, thanks for that uh, review. So let's talk about what's new. You guys have been busy for a year or so, and uh, what's what's coming out that uh, is going to get us all excited? A lot of very exciting things have, have come out over the last year. So we're on version 2.0 of our product. We've rounded out the product uh, quite a bit, and so now we support all storage types. So we don't care if it's... Uh, uh, block-based storage or NFS-based storage. We don't care what the connectivity is, whether it's DAS, internal or external storage. Any uh, data store type uh, that the customer can run with ESX, uh, we now support. We added some new features in uh, version 2.0, and probably the most exciting new feature is pre-warming of the cache. And so one of the uh, um, most valuable features of ESX is the ability to vMotion running machines uh, between ESX hosts for either right. load balancing or performance reasons. It, well, and, and I think I know where you're going, but one of the challenges we see when we do a vMotion and we're doing caching is now after that vMotion, I take this massive performance hit because I've got to you know, wait for this thing to get warmed back up again, which could take a little while, right? Absolutely, and so we have integrated within vCenter, which actually uh, uh, coordinates the, the vMotion events. Mm -hmm. And when vMotion notifies ESX on one host that it was requesting a vMotion to another host, uh, we get notified uh, of that event. And as the vMotion is occurring, we bundle up all the metadata for the uh, virtual machine that's transitioning this includes all the learning that our adaptive algorithms ha have garnered about the I.O. patterns of this virtual machine, as well as the list of the hot blocks, mm -hmm. and we actually send that metadata over to the target host uh, before the virtual machine transitions. And so the target host has all the learning for the I.O. patterns of the virtual machine, as well as the list of the hot blocks, and it actually pre-warms, brings the hottest of the data into the cache local to that ESX host before the vMotion completes. And then once the vMotion is completed, 
ported back through vCenter, we can release all the Flash resources on okay. the original host so that they can be used for other purposes. Okay, so what that means is once I start running my VM over here, I'm gonna get the, assuming the ESX server itself is the same, I'm gonna get the same performance uh, after vMotion yeah. than I had before. A very, very slight dip uh, Whenever you vMotion a machine, sure. there is a, a small dip while it's happening. But yes, it recovers very, very quickly, a matter of seconds. Okay, awesome. All right, anything else in 2.0? Uh, uh, we've added a number of new features around reporting with uh, reporting and statistics usages and cache utilization uh, for real-time, daily, weekly, monthly. We can export that out to support chargeback uh, mechanisms. We've had a number of, of customers in the service provider realm that are using ESX as uh, the basis of, of their service provider technology. Uh, we have added spe uh, features specifically to support them. Role-based administration is, is new in 2.0. Okay. And that allows self-serve for the uh, uh, service providers. Probably one of the largest new features of AutoCache 2.0 is we've actually gone cross-hypervisor. And so version 1.0, version 1.1, ESXi only, we've actually now announced support for Hyper-V. Okay. And so, that the, so basically the same software intelligence will work uh, across the different uh, hypervisors. George, you hit on a very important point, intelligence and I.O. processing. This is a trend that we see going forward, and in fact, this was the first of our patents that issued, was the way that we intercept I.O. within a hypervisor, either ESX or Hyper-V now, mm -hmm. and we can actually perform policy and processing on I.O. streams in real time. Today, we're doing on caching. Going forward, we're actually going to leverage this technology into new areas. Any hints on what the new areas will be? Well, I'm afraid I can't really give you too many clues there. Uh, we do have some ideas that, that we are prototyping today and beginning to share with potential partners. Okay, so definitely stay tuned for that one, right? Yes. So, but uh, on this, one of the things I wanted to back up to is uh, the, the, the conversation you had about the reporting and things like that. It sounds to me like that'll help me determine uh, when I need more flash resources or if I have too much, things like that? Yes, it, it does help with trending and resource uh, uh, utilization. It's also important for build back in, okay. in the uh, uh, service provider model. So uh, they're both pushing the ability to uh, control caching policy down to their customers for self-administration, mm -hmm. and we have a mechanism that allows them to build back for those services. What, what else is new in 2.0? -up? We no longer require a reboot on installation. So. We are simple to deploy, a very easy to roll out with a single VIB. Previous versions of the product, there was one reboot necessary on the host itself. Uh, that is, of course, disruptive to operations. And so in the 2.0 uh, version of the product, we've removed that uh, requirement, and now we can do live installs and live uh, uh, uninstalls of our product. Well, that, and I, I would think that would make testing a lot more approachable, right? Because you don't need to schedule a special time to shut down the uh, Absolutely. Host. Okay. Well, great. So, what, you know, what I'm hearing is it, one of the big things, I, it sounds like you guys are driving for is a sort of a single cache for the, for the enterprise, right? You've got a, uh, the, the ability to go across hypervisor. You don't care anymore about protocol. And one of my concerns was I thought we were going to start seeing this sort of perf what I was calling performance sprawl, where you had to have a cache for this environment, cache for that environment, cache for that storage system, et cetera, right? Well, it sounds to me like you guys are eliminating that and, and really giving enterprises the ability to kind of standardize on one platform. Absolutely, but I do want to make it clear that we believe that flash technology is going to be pervasive throughout the infrastructure. And there is a place for Flash within the hosts. We also believe there's a place for Flash out in the arrays itself. And we're working on ways to take our IO intelligence and coordinate with other storage vendors to actually make the use of Flash at multiple tiers in the architecture additive and benefit. Okay, well that's great. That sounds like something we need to stay tuned for. Thank you. Rory, thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in.